Hello watchers, welcome back to the channel. What I have for today's video review is a Steinhardt. So uh, this is again thanks to Graham, uh, a local watch enthusiast and collector who has made some of his watches available for review. So you know that is always much appreciated. Anybody who has lent me watches, uh, again I will really do my best to feature this on the channel. Uh, now Steinhardt obviously is a German based company who uh, has watches made out of Switzerland and a lot of their models if not all of their models use ETA movements and really uh, they're becoming a little bit of a thing because uh, ETA or ETA are going to start cutting down their supply to other watchmakers so maybe this will become different in the future so watch this space with regards to this company um, so this you know this is a, a I think a fairly standard box for the company and it is a nice uh, false leather even if it's real leather uh, whatever it is it's a nice uh, you know presentation box and you know it's a little bit of hook here to open and yep uh, what we have here is the Steinhardt Ocean Vintage Military so let's get this out of the box for the review okay put that aside and take that off okay so immediately you see that there are a lot of Rolex Submariner cues here but this one interestingly actually homages a very rare Rolex military sub this is the uh, the unit uh, reference is 5517 a military sub that was uh, uh, issued to members of the British military in the 1970s and in my reading I, I think only as I understand it, about 1,000 to 1,200 units were issued. So they're extremely rare because, you know, not all of them have survived to today. And if you see a Rolex 5517 on auction, apparently in good condition, they can go for over $100,000. So suffice to say that almost all of us, almost all of you watching this will, you know, never own one. Certainly I don't think I will ever look at considering getting one of those vintage watches uh, so you know with that in mind the proposition of owning an homage to a watch that you never get your hands on is appealing to many people who have uh, looked at the Steinhardt Ocean Vintage Military uh, immediately um, you see that the difference between this and the typical sub is firstly the hands you know there's no Mercedes hour hand it is a kind of stubby sword or almost like a diamond hand for that hour marking uh, hour hand and then the bezel is the other major difference you can see there are minute markings all the way around the bezel as opposed to just the first uh, 15 minutes is the, the typical uh, Rolex sub bezel so you know those are two of the vintage uh, features of this particular uh, watch or at, at least that watch that this model uh, is an homage to. Now the first Ocean Vintage Military um, that they made didn't have the Ocean 1 under the Steinhardt there at the, the top half of the dial uh, so it was more of a slavish homage. They also interestingly if you see the bottom half of the dial there this one has a thousand feet. Now the original uh, Rolex was 660 feet or 200 meters and they actually put that on the dial of the original Ocean Vintage Military even though that you know was also a 300 meter water resistant watch and that was you know slightly criticized for being too slavish and homage you know that one in the circle uh, also an interesting feature because the original Rolex had a T in a circle for tritium uh, this one is a one in the circle uh, kind of alluding to the Ocean One line that this belongs to you know so really some nice uh, touches uh, in terms of the, the uh, reference to the original Rolex that this does. So what we have in this watch is the ETA 2824-2. So you know, such a fantastic value proposition for this, uh, this watch. You know, the, the, the ETA 2824 used so widely in, in even upper-end uh, Swiss watches above 2000, maybe even higher than that. Um, you know, for this uh, value of uh, 380 euros or around US 440 that's just you know I, I think a lot of people have written that this is nearly unbeatable value for a Swiss made watch 
with the features that it has. Now this movement, of course, 28,800 beats per minute, same as the, the one in the Oris Equestate that I've reviewed a long time ago. 25 joules uh, rated at a 40 hour power reserve. Uh, it does have hacking and it does have a uh, manual winding feature, uh, but you've already noticed they've actually modified it to not have the date. So interestingly, there are three positions of this, you know, in the first position it winds, there is a second position which normally would adjust the date that does nothing. And then in the third position, it hacks the watch and allows you to adjust the time. So, you know, just, just to demonstrate uh, as an example, removing a date complication is relatively easy task, I think, for watchmakers. Uh, this case is in 42 millimeters. It is in 316L stainless steel, 13 millimeters thick and appropriately, I think, uh, 22 millimeter lug width. It does have a proportionately long lug to lug length of 50 millimeters. So it weighs relatively larger uh, as a 42 millimeter dial on the wrist. Uh, the, the surface uh, on the top, as you can see, is nicely brushed and it transitions to polished surfaces on the sides. All right, and then you have that screw in case back with a very interesting uh, picture there, you know, that's like kind of like a, is that a Trojan? Is that a mythical warrior, you know, riding a giant seahorse, you know, who knows, you know, but it is an interesting touch. It is, you know, plain uh, and it's flat, but it is an embossment of uh, interest. Uh, screw in case back you see there and a screw in crown at the typical Rolex three o'clock position or, or, you know, I guess in so many watches, it is going to be at the three o'clock uh, position rated at 300 meters water rating that we've already uh, pointed out. The, the, the dial here is a dark gray vintage style. So, you know, there's no applied indices. It is, you know, printed and painted with uh, Super Luminova. Uh, and in this case, uh, they've gone for old radium color, you know, both on the hands and the L markings. Uh, and it's a kind of this dark yellow, color super luminova and i think that's supposed to give a false patina to the appearance you know some people don't like the idea of false patina i think this plays off quite nicely to the the design of this watch and how it offsets on that dark gray dial personally that's that's what i think of this the sapphire uh, on top and yes it is sapphire is pleasingly a dome design you can get some uh, some nice uh, distortion there because of the dome uh, and it's got an anti-reflective coating on the inside, and then you will note, quite interestingly, it's got a it's got quite a heavy bevel on the side that you can see sticks up above the bezel there. So that that's a nice little uh, noted feature of this particular glass that they've chosen to put on top here. Uh, stainless steel uh, bezel insert here, black with uh, you know unadorned steel for where the actual markings and the numerals are on the bezel there. Now uh, the bracelet moving off from the case brushed in the classic uh, oyster style solid blaze bracelet with uh, pleasingly uh, if you can see screw in link uh, adjustment feature here so you can do it without any fancy tools. Uh, solid end links of course uh, you know that you, know, you you don't expect anything else to the how well this watch is already made of course it is going to be solid end links that you can see there uh, it is brushed on the top and then it transitions to polished on the sides to match exactly what the case does the bracelet now this is probably the weakest part of this excellent watch is uh, press metal right you can see there no dive extension as well so, you know, a few points to criticize. It is brushed on the outside and this part here where the Steinhardt logo sits uh, is polished. And there's, you know, I, I criticize that Seiko Paddy Turtle for the, the bracelet clasp being weak. This one is even weaker. There's, there's no, there's no, not even a push button release here. It is just a friction uh, piece there that holds it. And then you've got that to uh, double lock it in place. Okay, so fairly uh, simple uh, press metal basic uh, 
bracelet, you know, this part could be machined, but as I understand it, this could also be made in a pressed fashion. So it's a little bit more solid than the rest of it. Okay, so let's put it on for the wrist shot. And there we have it. You know, that's how pleasingly, it really sits very pleasingly, uh, just like a sub wood. Uh, but of course it is modernized to a 42 millimeter size as compared to the original watch that this homages is was a 39 millimeter watch okay so that's really you know I've, I've enjoyed having this on the wrist it really sits very comfortably even though it is a very substantial watch you know 42 millimeter uh, case size it weighs 174 grams you know significantly heavier than uh, my Seamaster and just as heavy as the Oris Equistate which you know, has a has a larger case size at 43 and is slightly thicker and definitely beefier uh, and, and weighs nearly as much as one gram in it to that Seiko Paddy Turtle, which, you know, is, is a 45 millimeter watch. You know, it, it really somehow packs in more weight than it, you know, than you would expect in this watch the way it looks. Now, what I've enjoyed about this, well, you know, it is excellently crafted it is so well made you know to just the way it feels in your hand um, you know Invicta I've talked about how their watches do seem to be you know well made for the price well this is definitely a step above that there's, there's no doubt about it when you hold this in your hand um, you, you're getting great value for a Swiss made watch you know that ETA that really reliable ETA 2824 movement you're getting sapphire glass um, you know, you're getting a, a very solidly built 300 meter dive watch. Uh, the bezel is is not a weakness in this case. You know, it is quite solid, and you can hear it is a nice. It clicks nicely. It's just a satisfying click. You know, it feels it feels solid. It feels as good as many Swiss watches that I've handled. Um, and, and you know, you're getting a, a, a stunning homage of a rare very uh i guess highly desired military vintage rolex submariner really it, it homages it so closely and i think that's why this has been popular particularly the original model that didn't have the ocean one and had a had a more black dial that that one seems to already start to appreciate in value if it was sold in good condition uh, now the weakness well really there's not much to complain about there's really only one weakness which i've pointed out is is the bracelet class here that that it leaves something to be desired i guess you could maybe upgrade the bracelet perhaps some people uh, are already starting to do that 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 one in a watch that is otherwise so well made you know it seems to be they've really packed a lot in uh they've left that bracelet slightly short that bracelet class so guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think of the Steinhardt Ocean Vintage Military. Uh, thank you again, Graham, for sending this watch to me uh, for this review. Uh, give us a like, guys. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to keep in touch. And as always, I will catch you next time.